G'day fellow miners and welcome to episode number four in my modded survival multiplayer series brought to you from the Hypermind server. Uh, this episode we are going to cover a lot of stuff that I have done over the last week and a couple of bits and pieces that I've done today. I did record some stuff earlier but I watched it back it was terrible. <laughs> so I've just scrapped it all and I'm re-recording the episode so I've, I've done I've done a bit of stuff that I've recorded for the episode um, but I'm just going to go back and revisit it. Uh, who's on? VT and Benito. Um, okay, so this is the, the farm dome. Um, as you can see, all complete, lit up. The dome itself is all complete. Um, uh, I've played around with it a bit. As you can see, it's not quite symmetrical, but I played around with it a bit to try and make it symmetrical. The, um, the uh, uh, modular force field system doesn't project a symmetrical sphere, unfortunately. But, doesn't matter, it's, <laughs> I'm dealing with it in my own little way. You can actually see right there that there's like a bit of asymmetry going on and it's it's hard to tell but it's there. But um, it's always niggling at me in the back of my mind. So this is the farming dome, I've set up a few little farms here, just the, the basics so far. An oak tree farm, mine factory reloaded rubber tree farm and a... Uh, a force tree farm and I'm going to go through quickly how these actually work they're all the same they all work in the same way uh, I'm getting my power from this uh, dimensional transceiver which is uh, the ender IO version of a tesseract the reason I'm using these is because they transmit a lot more power than tesseracts do um, and there's no as far as I know there's no loss um, and then I just have this universal cable running down here to power both machines. And then I have this sort of semi-convoluted item or inventory uh, set up here. I have the farm feeding into an ME interface and the reason I use an ME interface is because you can see it covers the hole here. Like it's the entire hole is covered by the ME interface. Whereas if you have a chest you have this little gap around the uh, the hole that you can see down. I really don't like that aesthetically. It, it's kind of annoying. And then what I do is I use these translocators from the translocator uh, mod. Item translocators. I pull everything out of here and put it into this chest. And then once it goes into that chest, I use another set of item translocators to filter the stuff. And the reason I'm doing it that way is so that all this is underground otherwise I'd have to have chests here and here and they'd be visible above ground so this is so that it's all underground uh, I've filtered these translocators to take the harvest the harvest goods the the uh, bounty if you will from the um, harvester and send it into my ME system via this ender chest which I own um, and then all the saplings or the germ materials so the stuff that is going to grow goes into this chest which is you can see connected to this item duct from thermal expansion so this is the new pipe that uh, the uh, COFH guys added to thermal expansion which puts it in the standalone mod category now because it's got its own power its own item transfer its own liquid transfer and its own power transfer so it doesn't it can stand alone as a mod by itself without uh, build craft or or any other mod to back it up um, and this this uh, item duct is semi-intelligent you can set filters on the inputs and outputs you could tell the pipes you can use a wrench to change the pipes to um, off input and output and you can change the actual pipes themselves if you wanted to um, restrict where items go you can change the pipes to this vacuum mode or uh, this dense mode and essentially what that does is it says go to this junction first and then if there's no room go to this junction so what happens is the saplings come in here they go they try and go into this which is full once uh, once they find out that's full they head back down this pipe and then they go into this trash can where they're destroyed so I don't have any extra saplings clogging up my system, they just get trashed basically. Uh, I could actually 
theoretically I could uh, I could pipe these to the ender chest and we can just see some stuff coming out now there goes some logs and you can see the saplings went straight into the bin because this thing is smart enough to know that this is full um, I mean later if I want to keep the saplings I could pipe this to the to the uh, ender chest instead um, but I'm, I'm just trashing the saplings for now so that's the farms all the farms are the same they work in the same fashion they're set up exactly the same and that's the plan for all of my farms like I'm going to trash all my extra seeds all my extra um, whatever it happens to be saplings everything uh, so yeah the farms are covered um, we're going to go up to the top level now which is here which is the new base and we've got some bits and pieces to look at here. Uh, I've got a few machines set up for on-demand processing at the moment because I don't have any automatic, um, like automatic crafting going on. So I've got some, you know, a handful of machines to do the stuff that I need to do before I get um, my molecular assembly chamber online, which we're going to do shortly. First, we're going to drop down here and have a quick look at some of the automation I've already got. This is my ore processing. It's uh, the machines are from a mod called Mechanism. I believe if you watched any of the guys' uh, videos from the previous Hypermine uh, version, you'll have seen this uh, ore processing system. It essentially triples your ores. So ores go in here, they're purified, and they produce ore clumps, which are then fed into... Um, this is a crushing elite factory. You can see these ore clumps and they get crushed into this dirty copper or this dirty dust. And then this enriching chamber turns it into uh, regular dust, which is then smelted and turned into ingots. And each piece of ore produces three of those clumps. So you triple your ores essentially. Um, this is a energy cell from thermal expansion it's one of the new energy cells it is the top layer the top tier energy cell it holds uh, 50 million um, redstone flux which is the new power system used by thermal expansion um, and it outputs a maximum of 10,000 inputs a maximum of 10,000 I honestly don't know um, how the conversion uh, what the conversion rate is to to um, Minecraft jewels. Um, what else do we have down here? We have uh, a bit of uh, obsidian auto crafting going on here. Just a lava fabricator, uh, igneous extruder, and a um, liquid uh, aqueous accumulator. Sorry. Cave spooky cave noise. Tiny little bit of automation. There's the. Uh, I've got an ME encoded pattern in here with crafting water cells attached to this uh, fluid transposer which is the old liquid transposer and then that just feeds to another ME interface at the bottom uh, I have here this is um, this is an igneous extruder which is creating cobble it's then getting pulverized into sand and then you get a 10% chance of uh, gravel sand goes in here into this ME chest with a 64k storage cell which is partitioned similar to the um similarly the obsidian one is is partitioned then the um the gravel goes into this barrel which has got zero gravel in it uh, which is then fed into this pulverizer which turns it into flint and then that flint is fed into here to uh as sort of a catalyst i guess for the purification chamber um, what else? What else? This is something I was playing around with. There's nothing. This is this is um, part of uh, factorization. This is basically a kiln for firing sculptures, which I've been playing around a little bit with to decorate. Um, what else? What else can we look at? So this is a sculpture down here. It's basically it's my lava lamp. Um, you can you can glaze sculptures and one of the glazes is lava so it looks like a lava block so it's a pretty cool effect uh, this is my advanced portal um, you can see you can you could dial out from this portal to pretty much any location so if we want to visit my reactor we can go through the portal and we go to the reactor room 
You've seen this before. This is the reactor room. Um, I added an additional wing here to the reactor and I, I've got two more to add. Uh, and this is, the additional wing is powering another dimensional transceiver which is powering my laser drill which I have set up in my old base at the moment. I will change that. Um, we're going to go back to home. We're going to go back to home. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, one of the things I filmed earlier was uh, creating this thing here. This thing is a portal to a place called the Promised Land. Uh, I'm not going to go through. We might have a look in the Promised Land a bit later, but basically it's another dimension kind of like the end or the nether but it's like all sky islands with uh with uh biome or realm specific blocks specific dirt and specific uh stone called uh, sky blocks and purified d dirt i can probably show you what it, what it is purified dirt so there's this stuff here and this purified grass block and then there is sky oops, sky uh, actually, I gave Zuljan all of the sky block I had because um, I knew he was interested in it. He'd, he'd asked about it a while back. Um, and you create this portal uh, with a thing called an ancient staff. An ancient staff is made up of three parts and it uses all of the six uh, overworld spawned or regular world spawned gems. So sapphire, tanzanite, uh, peridot, malachite, uh, ruby, and topaz, and it also uses a nether star and a bunch of endstone. You make the three pieces, and you assemble the three pieces, and you get this ancient staff. When it's used, you, you end up with this depleted ancient staff, which you can then combine with a nether star to make another ancient staff, if you wish. Um, I don't really see the point of having another portal, though. Uh, once you've got one, it's kind of permanent, but uh, we won't really worry about looking at uh, the Promised Land today. We are going to move on, and we are going to go actually to the Quarry World and have a look there. And what we have here, oh, let's get some run speed going on. We have an ender chest which I am importing all of my like gems and uh, any ore that will that nets um, a bonus from fortune because I have here this uh, this fortune um, quarry and you can see down here we're starting to build up a big block of all those types of ores from my for my quarry over here. Uh, oh maybe yeah this is done this is done i did a i quarried out this section here um sort of this half to about i believe it's about uh yeah about here it was about halfway so i quarried this whole section out here interesting enough we can see oh, what, why is that there we can see oil back here which the quarry's blocked off because i had a pump sat next to it um, but this is what I, how I'm processing like all my gems and you know diamonds, quartz, um, power ore, uh, any any nether quartz I generate from my uh, laser drill. All the biomes are plenty. Uh, gems, you can see this huge block of uh, of stuff. And all I need to do now is. Oh, basically what happens is that comes through this this uh, ender chest so there's another ender chest at my base which is fed by uh, export buses and it pipes all the way down here into this uh, filler which then places it into the stack and the reason I piped it down was because if I had like say I went mining and I came up with a whole bunch of um, gem ores I could just drop them in the chest here I don't have to go all the way down the bottom to do so um, but what we're going to do is basically we hit this with a let with a um a wrench it remembers the last size that was programmed into it and then it just mines and we can see it's just mining and because the 
because the um, quarry is a silk touch quarry it uh, gives me all you know it gives me the benefit of of the silk touch so multiple gems from each each thing so and and it's a it's a sped up quarry it's a uh, what would you call it a uh, um, efficiency five unbreaking three quarry as well so it's significantly sped up the same as that that my main quarry and um, it does the job rather quickly so that's just a rather than having to lay all this stuff out manually and um, break it with a fortune pick I just use this method and it looks really cool like this huge block of gems looks really cool <laughs> Wooly, uh, Wooly came over here and saw it before and he, he laughed because uh, it just looks ostentatious and ridiculous <laughs> yeah so that's the uh, that's the gem processing I guess and I'm gonna leave that to go unfortunately there is a bit of an issue with quarries plus you need to chunk load the quarries um, and while I think about it I should pull down this fella here because we don't need to chunk load this section anymore there we go and uh, this is all off so it doesn't really it doesn't really need to be moved or changed or anything until I decide to set it up again. I probably don't need another quarry for a while though. Alright, so we can see that this is pretty much almost done. Very cool, I love it. I'm going to probably automate this a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to see how um, gates detect this to see whether this has got work or not. And if I if I can tell the um, somehow tell a turtle when this is I don't know put out a bunch of stuff maybe I'll use a block update detector uh, you know I don't know at the top here or something to, so when a block gets placed next to it the turtle will wrench the quarry and it will it will um, run and harvest everything probably might be a little bit long-winded though because it could probably take a while to fill this up <laughs> all the way but anyway that's the that's the gem processing system um, what else can we have a look at today we went to the fusion reactor we've had a look around here oh that's right we're gonna set up the Mac um, so I'm gonna pull all this stuff out it's gonna be uh, five by five by four and uh, I gotta remember to put that block of emerald back. Whoops. And then I'm I'll, off camera. I'll start filling it up with uh, recipes. Bang, there we go. There's our uh, there's our molecular assembly chamber all set up, ready to go. Just to put, uh, just need to put some recipes in there. Um, and I also need to set up a bit more in the way of automation. Like I need uh, one of these things, uh, these plate, the metal formers um, automated. I need to have one of these automated. I need the fluid transposer and induction smelter are automated for for three things I think uh, end uh, uh, ender pearls redstone and glowstone um, and yeah there's lots and lots of automation I need to do I need to automate metallurgic infuser so that I can um, make steel easier um, osmium compressor probably not so much these guys probably not so much either uh, although maybe maybe I do need to set this up because um, there's an update for end IO which fixes a lot of the issues that it has at the moment 
But um, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Um, if you have any ideas or suggestions or things you want to see me do, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, and have you know, just give me general feedback on how you're thinking the uh, series is going at the moment. Do you want to see um, more on-camera work? I mean, I did do a bit of on-camera work today, but I had to scrap that footage because it was rubbish. But uh, yeah, thank you for watching, guys, and keep on digging.